Beautiful Devil, A Dark Mafia Romance, Sinners and Saints, Book 5, written by Piper Stone, narrated by Skylar Morgan. Chapter 1 Monsters do exist in every shadow. Dangerous beasts, hungry to feast and ravage. A monster found me one moonlit night, and he's determined to keep me locked in a cage. My creature of darkness is the devil himself, a beautiful, dangerous man who plans on stealing my body as well as my soul. But he will never claim my heart. Emily Shepard Emily Mr. Falco, I'm going to finish stalking the Watkins before I leave. How many times have I asked you to call me Eddie? The kind, older man gave me a sly grin as I placed the last of the items needing refrigeration into the crate. He'd been good to me since my sudden return to New York, offering me a job after less than five minutes of an interview. My mother had told me he'd be kind. I'd never waited tables before in my life, but he'd liked my style, or so he said. He knew this was a temporary gig for me, hopefully no longer than three months, but that was dependent on my mother's health. The uncertainty had forced me to quit a job I loved. Eddie, I repeated as I lugged the last items around the counter, grateful it was closing time. I was exhausted, the late evenings taking a toll, and it was only my third night. Eventually, I'd get another job in my field, but not in New York. I loathed the city and always had. At least the diner allowed me flexibility. And free food. I laughed as I struggled to throw open the latch, slapping my back against the frigid steel door to steady the crate before walking inside. The blast of cold air instantly forced goosebumps to skitter down both arms the ugly short-sleeved shirt doing little to provide warmth or comfort. I eased the crate onto one of the produce boxes, placing the containers in their required space, eager to climb into a warm bed. Within seconds, my teeth were chattering, forcing me to pick up the pace. As I turned to leave, I tripped over the edge of one of the boxes, throwing out my arm just in time to slam my hand against the door latch, almost tumbling onto the floor of the kitchen. Pop, pop. The sound was distinct and terrifying. Gunshots inside the diner. The horrific reverberation immediately echoed in my ears, the vibrations jarring as my eyes caught the muzzle flash. As Eddie was pitched backward by the force, I realized the two bullets had gone clean through, blood and brain matter splattering across my face, neck, and chest. In slow motion, the sweet, older man crumpled to the floor in front of me, a portion of his skull shattered by the bullets. That's the moment all time seemed to stand still. I was instantly paralyzed as I slowly lifted my head, startled from the sight of the assailant standing in front of me. While bathed in shadows, it was easy to tell he was a large, muscular man, dressed in all black. He exuded raw power, his chest rising and falling. Now he had his weapon pointed directly at my head. I took several deep breaths, trying to process what I'd just witnessed, the spots dancing in front of my eyes making it impossible to see clearly. But I knew exactly what had occurred. My boss, the man I'd known for less than a week, had been shot, two bullets entering his frontal lobe, rendering him dead within two seconds. The assailant had entered through the front door before Eddie had a chance to lock up for the night, the assassin turning off the main lights to avoid drawing unnecessary attention. I lowered my gaze, still trying to process what had happened, when I realized the assailant had moved around the counter, headed in my direction. He pointed his weapon at my face. I finally took gasping breaths. You need to get away. Move. Move, I thought. But my body refused to cooperate. Besides, it was obvious I wouldn't make it a single foot without being shot. What do you want? I managed, my voice shaking. A very loaded question that you wouldn't like the answer to. However, 
we don't have time to make the situation any more difficult than it is. His voice was deep, husky, and very much in control. The killer also had an accent, although so slight I couldn't detect from what country. The darkness of his tone was sensual, dominating. I concentrated on the rapid thumping of my heart, counting the beats as he moved even closer. Now I was able to gather a strong whiff of his aftershave. Sandalwood and spices, a hint of a deep forest fresh with the dash of the ocean. My god, what was I doing? I managed to catch a good look at his weapon, shocked at what he was carrying. The MP-443 Grotch was used by Russian military, not typically sold in the United States. The double-action short-recoil semi-automatic was a powerful weapon, used for exactly this purpose. He wasn't some criminal off the street. He was a trained professional. I was drifting onto a precipice, uncertain if what I'd just seen had really happened. The moment he grabbed my arm, spinning me around so my back was against his chest, I almost lost it. As he pressed the frigid barrel of his pistol to my temple, I was no longer certain I was standing. There was a presence about him that was larger than life, which should add to the moment of terror, but I remained in the protective vacuum, just trying to clear my vision. Then I realized why I was having difficulty seeing clearly. There was blood in my eyes, and on my face, and in my hair, and on my hands, and... I finally let out a ragged moan, still unable to put a coherent sentence together. No, hell no, this bastard wasn't going to strip me of my humanity or my intelligence. I tried to think of every scenario of how I could get away from him, but in all of them, there was very little chance I'd survive. When there's nowhere to run, then you listen, remain calm, and stay vigilant. The criminal will make a mistake. The last thing you want to do is antagonize your captor. No sudden moves, no excess talking. Just breathe. Practice with me. Breathe. My father's words continued to play in my mind. At least they provided a small amount of comfort. I took several deep breaths, holding the dense air into my lungs as I counted to five. Then I asked the question calmly, devoid of any emotion. I asked you a question. What do you want? Mr. Falco was a very nice man, but he didn't have much money. However, you can take what you want. The cash box is in his office, and I'm happy to show you where that is. He snickered as he led me toward the back of the diner. I assure you that Mr. Falco was not a very nice man, and I certainly don't want his money or yours. Then what? What? Please, just take what you want and leave. Every bit of training I'd received from my father over the years was being challenged, ugly scenarios crowding out his calming voice. Maybe because there'd been a quietness about the assassin as soon as I'd made the demand, which scared me more than what I'd just witnessed. I sensed the assailant was trying to figure out what the hell to do with me. He thought I'd seen his face, but I'd been too frightened to capture much more than the fact he was huge in stature, his anger evident by the way he held his weapon and the way his jaw remained clenched. He hadn't expected anyone else to be inside the diner. Unfortunately, you were in the wrong place at the wrong time, which means you're coming with me. No, no, I'm not. I'd heard stories about how victims of violent crime reacted, some so stupidly they'd gotten themselves killed. I fell into that category when I jerked my arm, almost managing to get out of its clutches. I was failing my father and perhaps myself, but I gathered a sense that if I walked out of the diner with the gunman, no one would ever hear from me again. His second yank was brutal, forcing me tightly against his body. That's when I realized just how large he was. Six foot four, at least. I wasn't tiny by any means at five foot six, but he seemed like a giant, the strength in his hand easily able to crush my windpipe if so desired. He was also a solid mass of chiseled muscle, which made him extremely dangerous. 
I allowed my gaze to fall on his forearm, memorizing the tattoos. Black ink covered almost every inch of what I could see, a single vine drifting onto the top of his hand. What the hell was this about, if not a robbery? My mind drifted to various scenarios, finally processing what he'd said about Eddie. The assailant had known him. Drugs? That didn't make any sense. Eddie was a family man. Then what, blackmail? What could this asshole possibly gain? A debt owed? That was always possible, but for what reason? Within seconds, the gunman walked us to the back door, jerking me to a stop. Now, are you going to remain quiet? What do you want me to say? There hadn't been a single night since I'd arrived back home that I hadn't heard screams in the night. None of them had been followed with sirens. That was another reason why I'd left New York. No one seemed to care about their neighbors any longer. Arizona was completely different, a place I'd almost thought I could call home. A yes or no will do. Fine, yes, whatever. If you're asking me whether or not I'll scream, why bother? No one will come to my aid. Besides, I know what you're capable of. He seemed to contemplate what I said, his hot breath skipping across the base of my neck. He chuckled in my ear, then cracked the door, allowing the stench of the alley to waft across my nostrils. The combination with Eddie's blood was putrid, my stomach finally lurching. I was aware of how masculine my captor was, muscular in all the right places. I closed my eyes, horrified from what I was thinking. A very sweet man had dropped dead in front of me, and I was languishing over his assailant's aftershave. Obviously, the gunman didn't trust me, slapping his massive hand across my mouth as he led me outside. He wasted no time crossing the alley, taking long enough strides I almost tripped twice. When he approached a sleek, dark sports car of some kind, another shock filtered into my system. A murderer in a sports car? I don't know why that seemed odd. When he opened the passenger door, my brain finally drifted out of the fog, and I started to struggle, trying to remember every self-defense class I had taken. He sensed every move before I made it, finally wrapping the arm holding the weapon around my neck. Suddenly, his lips were against my ear, mere centimeters away. Too close. I felt suffocated, my throat closing. There was also something far too intimate about the hold, his fingers resting on the top of my breasts. As he crushed me against him, another slight moan escaped when I felt the hard ridge of his cock pressing against me. The man was fully aroused. Oh God, oh God. You need to listen very carefully, because I'm only going to say this once. If you try anything like that again, I will be forced to hurt you, and I don't think you want that to happen, correct? No, sir. Sir? Really? I was losing it, no longer the same woman who'd started the shift. I certainly wasn't naive to this type of crime. I'd been taught how to defend myself from as early as eight years old, my father insisting I learn methods of getting away from anyone who attempted to abduct me. When he taught me how to shoot, not only handguns but assault rifles and crossbows as well, much to the chagrin of my mother. He'd added wrestling moves and boxing as training exercises, something I'd hated but grew to appreciate over the years. I dealt with criminals while interning at the hospital, junkies drifting into the emergency ward in search of a quick and easy fix. I'd been the one to handle the situations, able to render the attic no longer dangerous until the cops arrived. But tonight, I'd lost all my training, surrendering to the fear. Good girl, that's much better. I darted a quick glance at him as he shoved his weapon behind his back, still scanning both sides of the street at regular intervals. Good girl? Had he really just called me that? I fought back the tears that were threatening to form, realizing what this meant. He was taking me somewhere else to kill me. As soon as he forced me under the passenger seat, 
another thought raced into my mind. Wait a minute. Why hadn't he killed me inside the diner? What was the difference in one dead body or two? Oh, God, no. He was taking me for another reason. Finally, the fighter flight mechanism kicked in, and as soon as he was near the front driver's side, I fought to get the hell out of the car, fumbling to find the handle, almost able to throw myself onto the pavement. The bastard was too quick, grabbing me around the back of the neck and jerking me backwards by several feet, tipping me at an awkward angle. He'd left his door cracked in his hurry, and I was finally able to lock eyes with his. They were dark, obsidian black pools of pure evil. Another wave of absolute terror raced into my system, but as I gazed up at him, I was struck by his incredible beauty. His face was expertly chiseled, his full lips and a high forehead adding to his stunning good looks. The ugly glow highlighted a three-day shadow covering his angular jaw, the look sexy as hell, adding to his dangerous aura. He had curly dark hair, the long strands covering at least an inch of his collar. Without a doubt, he was the most gorgeous man I'd ever laid eyes on. A flutter of excitement surged in my tummy, the hardness of my nipples as shocking as the entire experience. The air was ripped out of my lungs as he cocked his head, exhaling, his hard glare penetrating. I was lying across his lap, forced to realize he'd remained hard as a rock. There was a quiet danger about his demeanor. A cold and calculating yet sexual energy he exuded was powerful. My mind went places that it shouldn't have, sensing an odd connection. A tether that was electric, abstract, and intense. I blinked several times, my lower lip quivering. He noticed my reaction, a smile curling on his upper lip. I thought you were going to be a good girl. I... I was never speechless, but as before, I couldn't form a single sentence to try and plead for my life. I also realized my skin was crawling, but my body was radiating the same heat his was, white hot, the touch of his fingers searing my skin. He closed the door, shutting down the light, now only the dirty street light highlighting his oppressive shadow. Don't try that again or I will be forced to punish you. Kostya What the fuck had just happened? I was told that there was no one else working the diner at night, leaving my work unhindered. Then she walked out from the walk-in and straight into the path of the two shots I'd taken. That wasn't how I operated. I'd never been forced to take anyone as a captive in the years I'd been handling business issues. By all rights, I should have ended her life to prevent any unwanted baggage, but I always made it clear to anyone who hired me that there would never be a single woman or child killed in the process of eliminating scum. It was obvious I was losing my touch. Now I was faced with figuring out what the hell to do with her. While I normally cleaned up every kill scene, not only wasn't there time, but Eddie's death would also seem like a typical random murder in the heart of the Big Apple. Even if the police dusted for fingerprints, mine had never been on a single file in any country. However, if my lovely hostage had brought some of her belongings to the diner, then questions would be asked. I would need to leave this godforsaken country within a few hours. While I had a secure location to take her on a temporary basis, providing borrowed time, there was a strong chance Eddie had already spread the word of my identity to the highest bidder. I had my share of enemies, and there was no doubt the asshole knew that. Any one of them would pay a pretty penny to have my dead body shipped to them in a pine box. I took several deep breaths, her fragrance filtering into my nostrils. My attraction to her was as ridiculous as it was dangerous. There was no reason for my cock to be hard the thought of indulging in pleasure remaining in the back of my mind. She was as unexpected as the incident itself, able to handle herself in the moment. Anyone in the position she'd been forced into would normally scream or attempt to get away immediately. Instead, 
She'd remained calm, ignoring the fact she'd been showered with blood and brains. Her face and neck were covered, her flimsy t-shirt soaked. However, that didn't detract from her utter beauty, something else to shock the hell out of me. Finding her attractive wasn't in my best interest, but taking one look into her large, dazzling green eyes had caught me off guard, my hunger for her pushing me to do something stupid. Now I had to deal with her. Perhaps I'd wanted her to plead for her life. That would have made things much easier. She just stared at me, her fury increasing as the reality of what she'd seen settling in. Her look of defiance remained, which intrigued me. She'd faced a killer, but the steel of her backbone prevented her from succumbing to the bad man. I'd walked into the diner with a single purpose in mind, eliminating the goddamn snitch who'd found a way to track me, something no one else had ever done. I was a ghost, a man with no past and no sense of mercy for anyone. My rage had been almost uncontrollable after I'd finally located the man, blinded by the need to exterminate the threat. I'd performed unspeakable acts of violence over the years, my choice of professions making my skills highly sought after, feeding the darkness that often became overwhelming. But this single assassination had been personal. No one fucked with my anonymity or my power. Hissing, I pulled myself out of the preposterous moment, easing her into a sitting position. You're going to sit here and stay very quiet. Do you understand me? Yes. This time, her answer was clipped, her anger fully present. She held out her hands, staring down at the blood on her palms. Her body was shaking more than it had been before, as a moment of shock started to settle into her system. I'd seen it several times, in the men I'd interrogated before ending their lives. Only they'd begged for their survival, something my unexpected guest had yet to do. She had no idea how intoxicating she was to me, as if being around her was a drug that would sustain my life. I studied her intently, impressed with her strong resolve. After watching her try to rub the blood on her shorts, I reached over her to the glove compartment. The second my arm touched hers, she let out the yelp I was waiting for, scooting as far away from me as possible. Relax. I'm getting something to allow you to clean off the blood. As if you think I'll ever get rid of it, you bastard. You fucking horrible bastard. There was the fire I'd seen in her eyes, the very one that had intrigued me in the first place. I ignored her comment, unlatching the glove compartment and grabbing one of the packages of wet wipes I'd stored inside. When I handed it to her, she turned her head slowly, her expression incredulous. Don't look so surprised. Just take it. She stared at the package before accepting, taking a few seconds, then ripping at the plastic, yanking several into her shaking hand. I watched as she started to wipe her hands, slowly at first, as if determined to wipe every spot of blood away, certain it would put an end to her nightmare. Little did she know, it was just beginning. What's your name? I started the engine, checking all the mirrors to make certain neither my arrival nor the act of vengeance had been captured by some wayward bystander. The night had been planned to go entirely different, get in and get out in less than a minute, leaving the city within an hour of my attack. Now that wasn't going to happen. She was quiet, now wiping harder, grabbing a few more, then rubbing her face indiscriminately. I'm not a patient man. When I ask you a question, you will answer me. I threw her a look as I roared away from the alley, her expression sexy and determined, which only fueled the ache buried deep inside. Her mouth pursed, her breathing skipping as she clenched her jaw. Emily. Emily, I repeated, allowing the softness of her name to slide across my tongue. Last name. What does it matter? Dead woman, that's my last name. You're going to kill me, so why bother? Her spunk was admirable, 
if not stupid. But the spirit she carried drew me in even more. My cock was uncomfortable as hell. Hard enough I was forced to shift in my seat. I wondered if she had any idea how enticing she was. I could envision her naked body under soft sheets, waiting for my arrival like a good little girl. I have no intention of killing you, Emily, unless you don't cooperate. Besides, if I'd wanted to, you'd already be dead. She allowed a ragged breath to escape. The way she chewed on her lip was just as enticing as everything else. Shepard. Emily Shepard. Now she was wiping furiously, making small grunting sounds as she did. Well, Emily Shepard. Your life is about to change. I have a life. As a waitress. When she laughed, I detected the lovely woman wasn't exactly who she purported to be. Her last name nagged at me, although I wasn't certain the reason. There was nothing special about it, common in every city around the country. Yet, I was never wrong when red flags were raised. Why do I sense that's not your only job? After shaking her head, she glanced out the passenger window, her nails digging into her skin. I wrapped my hand around her thigh, squeezing until she forced herself to look at me. Stop, or you're going to hurt yourself. As if you give a shit. Exhaling, I tried to control my anger and desire, both colliding together. Now was not the time. She held the filthy rags bald in her hand, her brow furrowing as she scooted forward in the seat. Put your seatbelt on, Emily. God, the woman was stubborn as fuck. Did she want to get herself killed? Emily? Fine, she muttered. I was surprised when she followed my command. What do you want? she asked, her tone not nearly as timid as I would have anticipated. The truth, Emily. You have another job. I want to know what that is. I wait tables at a diner in New York. Nothing more. The way she mentioned the city held a sound of disdain. She was also hiding her life from me. Did she not believe I could find out anything about her with a single phone call? What were you trained to do? I could almost hear the curse words she mumbled under her breath. I'm a doctor. A pediatrician. So the hell what? I save lives, not take them. Do you want me to tell you stories about the babies who come into my waiting room so sick they can't hold down food or water? Or would you prefer the ones where something more tragic happened and I was lucky enough by the grace of God to save their lives, keeping their beautiful families intact? Her expression of hate bore into me, reminding me that I was a soulless man. I removed the wipes from her hand almost required to wrench them away. Then I shoved them onto the dashboard. No, of course not. You couldn't care less. That's all I've ever wanted to do. There's nothing like hearing their laughter or being able to dry their tears. She laughed again, the sound bitter. Something snapped inside of me, the need to consume her, overriding my purpose in coming to New York in the first place. The way she'd felt in my arms had awakened a desire I'd shoved aside almost fifteen years before. While there'd been women on occasion, there'd never been a single minute of peace or passion shared with them. They'd been vessels, their purpose similar to mine. A moment of satisfaction and nothing more. Emily was entirely different. She carried an air of pride, even if only waiting tables in a greasy diner. She reeked of innocence, intelligence, and the kind of sexuality I craved. Although I doubted that she had any idea just how vulnerable she was sitting barely 18 inches away from a man who had no heart and no soul, my conscience and humanity tossed away 20 years before. I'd felt the attraction the moment she'd been forced to look into my eyes. I'd gathered an incredible whiff of her desire which she continued to fight valiantly. Did she have any idea the lurid, filthy thoughts running through my mind? Images of what I could do to her voluptuous body? 
I rubbed my jaw as I thought about how to handle her. I had two choices in my mind, kill her or keep her. Only one appealed to me. Letting her go could only prove to cause additional issues. Even if my plane was standing by, waiting to fly me out of this godforsaken city. Still, I found myself compelled to taste her. Perhaps with a single night spent, her lovely body writhing under mine, I'd be sated enough to let her go. Damn it. I longed to bask in her beauty, ripping away her slim tether to purity and goodness. I wanted to rob her of her innocence, relishing the moment of bringing her pure ecstasy. Perhaps her virtue could rub off, providing me with a sense of remorse for my sins. Laughing to myself, I knew that would never happen. As I headed onto the interstate, the same needs furrowed into the back of my mind. She'd made the mistake of entering my life. Now, there was no turning back. After all, I always took what I wanted. Emily Shepard now belonged to me.